Hey everyone, I just recorded a video for my real estate company, Innovative Properties Group, where a team of uh, agents with Remax Town and Country in Canton, Georgia. Uh, but I wanted to post a content on um, Alpha Dog Investments uh, YouTube channel because the content is is very relevant for the investment community. So uh, so here it is. So here's the thing that everybody is uh, talking about today is uh, Zillow has announced that they are getting out of the home buying business. And I don't wanna speak specifically to, um, to Zillow or, or, or about Zillow specifically, but more broadly about the iBuyer uh, phenomenon that we've experienced the last couple of years. So for those of you who don't understand what I mean by that is that there are very large companies that have come into the real estate market over the last few years and they're buying uh, properties directly from home sellers and they've, they've really impacted the market in a big way. They've impacted the, the realtor community uh, and the home buyers and home sellers uh, big time. And what I've observed over the last couple of years, when it first started, uh, I noticed that uh, these huge companies with deep pockets were paying prices for homes that did not make sense with the property conditions that I was seeing. And they were overpaying, basically, in, in my opinion. And uh, they kept doing that, they kept doing that, but then uh, I began to realize that what is publicly stated as the sales price is, is correct. It is the, the sales price that both parties agree to, uh, the seller of a property agreeing to sell it to this big, huge company uh, for a, an inflated price, uh, in my opinion, again, uh, based on the property condition. But what they did uh, and what they are doing that is hidden from the public is that they're negotiating with the seller to give them as a buyer a credit for repairs and, and uh, deferred maintenance of the home. And so that's written up on the financial statement, both parties agree to it, but that's never disclosed publicly. You can't find this information in the public tax records. You see the price of the home that it was sold for and, and that's it. And you could find in the FMLS uh, or, or the MLS system how much, um, Maybe a buyer uh, got a credit from the seller for their financing, uh, but that's like with a traditional buyer with a traditional mortgage. Uh, but the iBuyers, you know, weren't doing that. Uh, so even that small amount of a, a seller closing help uh, didn't, doesn't even appear. Uh, but what doesn't appear at all, and there's no way to know for sure, uh, how much credit the seller is giving back to the buyer. Let me give you an example. Let's say a house has a, um, a fair market value of $260,000, but if it was all fixed up, it could go for $300,000. And so the seller agrees to sell the house to this big, huge company with deep pockets for $300,000. And then the buyer, the, this company goes back to the seller after they do a, an inspection of the property and, and come up with a list of repairs to be made that there's basically uh, $30,000 of repairs that need to be made. And so uh, they negotiate that, that as a credit that the seller gives them. They don't reduce the price. The price is still $300,000, but they negotiate a credit that the seller will give a credit of $30,000 to the buyer. And that appears on the statement. It's disclosed for legal purposes among both parties and the closing attorney knows that. And, and, but that's not what's recorded in the courthouse. The $300,000 price point is recorded. So we see that the house sold for $300,000, but we really don't know uh, if a credit was given, how much of a credit was given, and in some cases, it's a very large amount. And so it's kind of skewed to begin with what we believe these I buyers are paying for the homes. Uh, but evidently, they, uh, another thing that I saw actually is that, uh, so they are negotiating this credit that we don't know about, but the credit that they're getting is about what it's going to cost them to fix it up. So there's no net gain in profitability uh, for the buyer. Uh, and the seller gets what they want. They want to sell the house. It's kind of easy to sell it to an iBuyer for the most part um, compared to opening your home up for 
for showings, but you never net the highest retail price that way, in my opinion. But, uh, but these companies are, are overpaying, so you know, it's close. Um, you know, will, will they pay more than what they can, what the seller can actually uh, net uh, listing on the market with the real estate after commission? Uh, in a lot of cases, it, it absolutely they can net more money. And I see this all the time because I work and I specialize in buying and selling investment property. And I work with a lot of <clears throat> uh, smaller investment companies and individual investors. And I kind of know that part of the market really well. Uh, the iBuyers are a, a, a different phenomenon. Uh, again, these are companies with big pockets. Uh, they have a lot of investor capital um, and uh, they, they can do things that the smaller guys can't. And another thing I'll say about the iBuyers is that they can afford to take a loss over time. So I believe they were buying houses and turning them into rentals uh, and they're purchasing at a loss, but they can afford to do that. And uh, as far as the equity goes, but they can then own a, a um, income producing, income generating asset that gives their investors a return of, uh, to me, it's a minimal amount, um, the way that the prices that they're paying compared to the rent rates, but you know, whatever, they, they're getting a return on the money, the capital that they're investing. Uh, another thing that the I buyers are doing, and I, I know I'm going off the track a little bit, but but this is very important. Uh, they are um, they are buying homes and holding them. Companies are buying you know thousands of homes all across the United States, and part of what they're doing is that they are reselling them in a in a quiet way. And what I mean by that is that they are turning them into what a what we call a lease purchase uh, agreement with a buyer who will. Uh, be a renter, so so yeah, they are renting the property. It does become an investment rental property, and they're getting a return on their investment. But they've entered it also into an agreement with the tenant that the tenant will buy the property a year later or two years later when they get the credit uh, situated and they qualify for a traditional mortgage to purchase a home. And so these I buyers are lining up their ducks basically uh, when they buy a home. They they oftentimes either have a back-end client that they will put in as a tenant, or they know they can find one uh, who will be a the tenant and then they purchase the home a year or two later. And that, that home purchase will never hit the market, the public market on the MLS. It will be recorded at the courthouse that, that the property changed hands. So that data is available over time. We will see uh, if that really bears out in a large number or not. But that's part of the picture of what's happening. Uh, so home sales, uh, these companies are not holding all the properties that they're buying long term. Uh, so anyway, that's my take on what's going on in light of the Zillow getting out of the home buying business and people asking me questions. Hey, John, what do you think about this? Uh, that, those are kind of my thoughts. I don't have specific thoughts about Zillow at this point that I really want to put out there. Uh, Zillow is what Zillow is. And, um, and it, it, it's been... Uh, interesting to have these i buyers in the market uh, it's made it challenging for a lot of realtors uh, the investor community is very dynamic there's a lot of real estate transactions that take place where realtors and licensed real estate agents are not involved in and it's a very dynam dynamic part of the real estate market uh, so if you have questions more questions about this working with investors if you're a uh, a licensed real estate agent or an investor and want to know more about uh, investing in real estate and how the investor side of the real estate market works, uh, feel free to contact me. I'd be glad to answer questions and, um, and communicate with you about this. Thanks.